and welcome to Real Menopause Talk. My guest today is Dr. Colette Hayden, who gives a supremely frank discussion about the reality of menopause for her and the need to be honest, especially when it comes to answering the question, how long does it last? At 64, she still has symptoms from time to time. So what does she do about it? She gives us a great explanation of how night sweats and disturbed sleep create anxieties and additional symptoms, and the crucial role of therapy for her in dealing with these anxieties when she felt she couldn't do so in her usual way. Having worked for some great brands for many years as a pharmacist and consultant, she then set up her own skincare range in her late 50s. She shares with us why your beloved moisturiser has stopped working and how to bring the joy and pleasure into your skincare routine. It's a moment with yourself and it's just lovely. She shares the secret of beauty. As Colette says, therapy is for people who want to be well, with the emphasis on well. Feeling low all the time, not feeling like yourself is not a way to live. Naming what is troubling you and having someone help you see it for what it is can change the way you feel completely. And this is why I am offering you Real Menopause Therapy, and for now, subscription is free. Sign up and enjoy half an hour for free as well. You get to handpick your therapist based on matching your health concerns, for example, menopause, with their expertise also menopause, your work environment, so they understand the unique pressures you face. Perhaps they used to work in your industry, or maybe they have small kids too. And even interests, from cave diving to coffee roasting, weightlifting to creative writing. So you find someone who really gets you. No obligation, no tie-in, just therapy that fits into your schedule and bring you back to the real and very fabulous you. Go to bit.ly forward slash RM therapy now. That's bit.ly forward slash RM therapy, capital R, capital M, capital T, now. And it's the moment you've been waiting for. Here's Colette. Dr. Colette Hayden, it is a delight to meet you. Thank you very much for joining me today. Would you like to start by telling everybody a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, your family, to get an idea of who you are? Well, Hattie, it's equally a pleasure to meet you and do this podcast with you. Well, I'm French, as you can hear. Uh-huh. So I was born, in fact, in, uh, in the Jura, which is a small mountain region, uh, very close to the Alps. So I was uh, very much born in the countryside. And I think the last generation of children who went skiing to school. Oh, wow. Uh, yes, an, an envy of a lot of people. I studied in, in Lyon. I studied pharmacy. I'm a doctor in dermo pharmacy, which means that I'm a pharmacist specializing in all products that have to do with the skin. I've been in England for 40 years now. So I pretty much after my studies, I moved to England for love. My husband is English. And uh, yeah, 40 years ago. So pretty much all my working life has been done in England. Do you miss anything about France or are you there regularly enough to enjoy both? Like everybody in England, I suffer from the... I find the weather difficult and also the food has improved in England, I miss the food terribly. But apart from that, there's something I often say, English people, if they didn't exist, should be invented. I adore (laughs) English people. (laughs) I I find them wonderful. Well, the feeling is mutual. France has a very special place in my heart. But I find the French much more difficult than the, uh, than the English. I say, you know, the French are, I can say so myself, uh, pompous, pretentious, and obnoxious. <laughs> and I love them for it. <laughs> but they do it with charm. 
and style. Absolutely. And style. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whereabouts are you in terms of perimenopause or menopause? Aha, uh-huh. well, that's an interesting one. Now huh? we're going to talk about menopause today. Well, 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 post, 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 I'm going to be 64 on my next birthday on the 31st of March. Well, happy birthday in advance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hattie. So I would say that, uh, well, 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 uh, well, well, uh, well, well past it. But that, that is in, interesting in itself. So I started, I started to be perimenopausal, shall we say. I don't quite completely remember now, but I would say maybe 48, 49, which mm-hmm. uh, a common age, I would say, well aware that some women start well before and some women start a uh, lot after. But but I would say 48, 49 is, is probably a very good average, you, you know. It was still at a time. So we're, we're talking of 15 years ago, Hattie, really. Right. Mm-hmm. Since I'm, um, okay. So it was still a time where menopause it's wonderful, first of all, I want to say that even you doing podcasts discussing a, a menopause, I can tell you that 15 years ago, it, it very much existed, you know, menopause. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't speak about it, really. It was just um, not only you would not speak about it with the general, the population at large, but even menopausal women between themselves didn't speak about it a lot. And I remember asking other women that seemed to me way older than me, therefore, having gone over menopause. And my question to them was, how long does it last? I'm never receiving the answer, okay? And I, I think that I have the same problem now. When a younger woman than myself approached me and tell me, well, well, Colette, how long did it last? It's hard to tell them, but I think we have to because now we are openly talking of menopause. I still have symptoms now. Menopause is not an, an illness that you don't have it, then you have it, and then you don't have it anymore. My expertise is the skin. I could not tell you. Oh, well, oh dear, your skin is going to, to be terrible. There's going to be this problem, this problem. But don't worry, darling, because <laughs> the menopause will end. This phase called menopause will end and all will come back to normal. It doesn't. And it reminds me, my daughters had a, a son not long ago. And it's, that is not connected with menopause, but it's a bit the same thing. It's like I find that women don't speak enough to, with each other about childbirth. And it's a bit the same thing. And she, so she had the baby, decided to have an epidural. And then afterwards, she said, how was it the epidural for you? She tells me. Well, I said, Roxana, I've had you and your brother without an epidural. She says, why you didn't tell me you didn't have an epidural? I would have chosen not to have one. I think women have this immense worry to tell other women about childbirth because you don't want to worry the others. Mm -hmm. It's the same about menopause. You don't dare, because actually out of kindness, (laughs) you don't dare dare when you're approached by a a woman, how how was it for you? Uh, Was it very bad? Because and particularly this question, how long it's going to last? Because the answer they want, a few months, darling, and you're going to be fine. And it is not like that. And I think they, they need to be this more open discussion. I would say for me now, I had these terrible symptoms, not so much perhaps when I was perimenopausal, but at the sort of... Uh, Beginning of menopause, it's very difficult to, to decide what is before, during, and after. <laughs> uh, essentially hot flashes that were terrible. But I would say that it's an adjustment that you have to make to, to, to your life, to yourself, to, to, to embrace and not imagine it's going to stop. It's, it, uh, to me, it's terribly important. That's the most important thing because what can bring another sort of symptoms, more 
emotional, I would say, apart from the physical symptom, is if you have this idea in your mind that it is going to stop. It is not. And I think it is best to realize that and just just live with it rather than expecting that you can brush it under the carpet. So you mentioned hot flashes. Yes. What other symptoms did you experience and what has continued for you? Right. Alors, the, the hot flashes were pretty terrible for me, uh, but initially they were uh, during during the day. I didn't I didn't have initially what you call a night sweat. Mm. Again, that's another thing with definition. Not only I think hot flushes are perceived as the one that you have during the day and obviously night sweat in the night, but they're not quite the same. Hot flushes, yeah. I would say, are frequent, intense, and very brief, whilst n- night sweat, they're just perhaps less intense, but more more lasting to an extent where you you wake up in the night and you can't you can't go back to sleep really so it was more the hot flashes but followed by the night sweat now so i'm pleased to report that i i hardly suffer at all anymore from uh, hot flashes but i still uh, suffer from night sweat. I need to explain as well that because there's, um, it's important to relate to the symptom to what I did about it. I didn't uh, take HRT. Uh, I'm not against HRT. It's a personal choice. I think here I would maybe say that it's you need to remember my background. It's I'm a pharmacist. It is very classic for pharmacists to take very, very, very few drugs. Maybe this misconception that the pharmacists having access to all these uh, these remedies are going to take one after the other. And I suppose we're so aware and trained to understand contraindication, side effects, etc., that I think we're probably a, a breed of people that are very, very wary uh, mm-hmm. uh, about medications. So I didn't take HRT, but I did take herbal remedies uh, that did help me with the hot flushes. It's not perfect, but here I would I would give an advice that uh, is not just for menopause, but for any physical symptoms or emotional symptoms that you, you may have, menopause and others, if you can find something, would it be a, a remedy? Like I said, me, I chose herbal remedies, but you, it could be a non-herbal remedies or it could be therapy, emotional support. I'll come back on therapy, which I did do as well. I think that it's perhaps good to understand that whatever you do is not going to give you a 100% success result. Exactly. But I think, and again, it's not about discussing statistics, but I would say that um, if you perceive what you feel that is very difficult for you, physical or emotional or both, if you put it on a little scale and you say that it, from zero till 10, that you feel you're at nine, it's horrible, and you're at nine or even at 10. If you can improve it, and to be say at six, our brain, our positiveness to, to, to feel this improvement can easily bring us to four. Mm-hmm. And, and when we are at four, we can cope very well with many things. And this is my advice. I think that's wonderful advice because it does boil it all down to perspective as well and experience. Exactly. And improvements are always going to yes, be good. Yes, yes. But also I would say that um, apart from, uh, so would it be HRT uh, or herbal remedies, whatever you choose, there are also emotional implications to, to menopause. I would say that it's, it is not that at the age of 50, you wish to get pregnant and have a child. Or if you do, I would say this is fairly unusual. But it is the, the, the end of, of uh, what you can perceive as, as your reproductive uh, use. And it, it can be extremely difficult emotionally as well. The physical symptoms can in turn 
give you emotional symptoms. With the night sweat, a lot later, that's what happened to, to me. So the night sweat wakes you up in the, in, in the middle of the night. If you can go back to sleep uh, straight away, it's okay. But if you can't, you stay awake. When you stay awake, dark thoughts, I think you say dark thoughts in English, mm -hmm. you, start, you yes. start to have this uh, very specific night anxiety. But also just the, the sheer fact that you're waking up, it disturbs your sleep. I'm not a sleep expert. I'm a skin expert, but your, your sleep pattern. And I think that it prevents you to have this cycle where, where you dream and evacuate those thoughts through dreaming. And you, you just, you almost wake up in the morning with, with a package of anxieties that have not been dealt with. I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but for me, this is another thing later that happened to me. I'd had therapy when I was younger. So I decided to go back in therapy, which I did for about a year and a half. My therapist was wonderful, was not a role to help me with, to help me with physical symptoms, but more to, to help me through the anxieties that I, I could perhaps not deal anymore in a normal way. That's my experience. Wow. <laughs> no, it's always so interesting to hear because whilst there are many common threads, It is a very individual experience for each woman. Is your daughter feeling prepared for what might come? I mean, if she's just had a baby, then I'm sure all her focus is on that. No, it's not. This is why I was giving the example of, of, of childbirth that I, I regret that I didn't tell her more about childbirth because she herself tell me afterward, why you didn't really tell me much? How it was for you. And like I said, I didn't because, uh, My daughter is 33. I just thought, and that's another funny thing, I just thought that, gosh, things have changed so much with childbirth that whatever I would say would not be current. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she's a bit older, I, uh, I hope I'm, I'm not that silly and I would tell her more about menopause. And like what, so I think it's, it's the courage to next time, um, a woman perimenopausal approached me and asked me this terrible question, how long does it last? It's the bravery to reply. Actually, a long time. So let's discuss the options. Yes, but therein <laughs> lies the, the joy of it. I'm not brush it on the carpet. Well, it's, it's a bit terrible, but only for a few months. Don't worry. It's just, well, you know, depends, but for these symptoms, there is this option. Yes. For this one, that option. And I think that we, like I said, to me, we tend to limit the options to HRT, HRT herbal remedies. And I think we, we forget the role of mental health support through, mm -hmm. through, through therapy. But again, it's a personal choice. So, a bit like with menopause they are it, the the it is changing but there are still uh, a, a number of people that would think that uh, therapy are for people who are mentally unwell and i would say therapy are for people who want to be mentally well i agree i honestly think everybody can see a therapist and benefit you don't have to have a problem even just unburdening day to day on somebody who's completely unattached emotionally to you at the time of your life it's not about having therapy all the time but if you feel that you know you're suffering from anxiety and we're all anxious it anxiety in human being is part of our survival instinct. If we don't worry about any singer, we, we are actually in trouble because we don't have this uh, survival mechanism in place mm -hmm. or, or, or empathy. But you know in yourself when your level of anxiety is above normal. Like it's, it's above normal is not the right word, but above a level where you cannot function Exactly. Yeah. Yes. 
How about your skin? How was your skin throughout that period of your life and how is it now? How has it changed? I'm very interested in skin. So uh, again, I'm terrible uh, because I love skincare. It's my passion. But a bit like HRT, as you have gathered, I'm not an interventionist. (laughs) (laughs) I love my skincare. Like I said, it's my life, my passion and my job. But um, I didn't do uh, Botox, injection, uh, nothing at all. I I do think that some of the sort of mottos for, for Lixia Skin really that It's not about perfection. It's never for me about counting the wrinkles. You know, you can have a good skin. In fact, there are three products that we have that are the core of the brand that we call the Good Skin Trio. It's never about perfection, no wrinkle, et cetera, et cetera. It's it's about a good, healthy skin, the best skin you can have for your age and like I said, I, I'm going to be 64 and I, I just have a good skin. Yeah, great skin. And I think I'm beautiful. Do you know the secret of beauty? The secret of beauty is a w- which I, I give to all women. Because, do you know, the, the puberty is also terrible. It's also a terrible time where they all think they're ugly, you know. And I said, you know, the secret of beauty is to go to bed one night and to decide that you're going to wake up beautiful the next morning. That's what I did. And I've never found anybody who dare contradict. <laughs> and I still think I'm beautiful. And that is my, that's where I'm very French and pretentious, but with charm. I think that is wonderful. You can be beautiful. There is no question about it. With Lixia's skin, how did you decide to set it up for yourself? Right. I'm quite well known in the industry because I've been a consultant developing those marvelous products for a lot of brands for a long time, still in the same laboratory where where I am today. Uh, In particular, I developed all the products for REN Skincare, and I was privileged to to be a minority shareholder and uh, and direct director of the of the business, and the the, the company was uh, sold. I think six six years ago. I can't uh, remember quite. So I came to a little money. I I just thought, okay, well, I'll uh, I'll help both my my children with the purchase of uh, their first uh, property uh, in London, and then I thought, what shall I do for myself? And really, I didn't really want. I'm not into very, very expensive uh, jewelry or cars. Uh, and really, it was the dream of my life. So this is how I started Lixia Skin, and I had a little money to do it. The packaging is divine. Thank you very much. If you've lived in London for 40 years, then you may remember the original Agent Provocateur of course, shop. Of course, I do. Yes. In Soho. I used to visit that when I worked in Soho for 10, 15 years very regularly it was my happy place and the colors the pink and the black just always scream glamour and gorgeousness um, it's like i said the the pink that i wanted to me is not uh, pink is a flesh the the, the inspiration is i see exactly what you mean with agent provocateur but also to me with uh, the sort of um, vintage la- lingerie yeah. that uh, y- you know, even the the suspenders in the in the thirties really mm-hmm. uh, at that color. Uh, and uh, but uh, to me, another inspiration, another uh, passion of my life is the ballet. Oh. So I, I did a lot of ballet when I was uh, young, and I still like to go. I take I take my granddaughter. Uh, to, I think it's a wonderful experience, and it's also the the chausson, the tight, the not the tutu because they're normally white, but you know the sort of the ribbons for the the repeto oh, chausson, and yeah. uh, that these are very much also in the same uh, very very feminine basically. Mm-hmm. It, they are just so beautiful. Yes, and yes. It all ties in in my mind, and I'm sure many other people's with the way that French women have a reputation for being just effortlessly glamorous. And age is a big conversation part of the menopause, or maybe actually the other way around. Menopause is only a part of the bigger conversation around age. 
and French women carry off growing older with sophistication and style and appeal. What do you think of that? My first thing to say is thank you. It's hard for me to, to, to judge that because I am French, but I, I see what you mean. I think that we define the French women very much as effortless. When an English woman is beautiful, she's really the true beauty, much more than the French. And, uh, I, just, just to compare the two, I think we're, we're perhaps more daring with what we wear. We're, we're perhaps more confident. Mm -hmm. We have this, um, difficult to define, this sense of the overall. For me, a capole or more wrinkle uh, don't matter. I'm not going to necessarily worry about uh, this detail of my bottom, this detail of my breast, this detail of this, this detail of that. Is it okay for me to wear this? Or is this okay for me to wear that? Uh, I still wear, I still have very, very, um, it's a podcast so people won't see, but very, very long hair, which is unusual for woman of my age who cares <laughs> and I think this is why we just we carry it off you know we we pull it through sort of thing and I think this is perhaps because of the it's about the overall perception of who we are rather than to be too concentrated on each very little detail I'm going to have to take that and consider all of that because it's what I aspire to. I want to, I want to have the confidence in myself and growing, growing up. <laughs> I mean, I had hoped I would have grown up by now. It's a work in progress, but to grow, to grow into myself is something that seems to be a theme. We all feel that we reach a yes. certain age and we become more, more confident in ourselves. But to dispel the aging and embrace it, wrinkles and all, that's an act. If you are confident, it's also the, the confidence to carry on caring for yourself. Do you know, it's about not keep giving up. It's about mm -hmm. remaining sexy at all ages. Yes. And I feel that women throughout their mm -hmm. life sort of... Uh, Typically, I was very, very unconfident as young women during puberty and, and after. And then they gradually gain confidence. And I feel just carry on gaining confidence. Don't, what should give you this idea that suddenly, and, and this is this emotional, the emotional trauma of menopause as well, to give you this idea that now you have menopause, so this is the very beginning of uh, aging, and then this is no point. Th there's no point to try. There's no point to to wear makeup, to wear beautiful clothes, to etc. No, carry on, carry on, carry on. Particularly because it does give you, if it does give you pleasure, but it can lift your spirits as well. It lifts your spirit absolutely. That is also part of of skincare as well. You know, it's the, it's the pleasure to look after yourself. Every night when I, I cleanse my skin, it's pleasurable. Every morning when I apply my moisturizer, it's pleasurable. Do you know, it's, it's a moment, it's a moment with yourself. So it's, it's just lovely. What are your best skin tips for a midlife woman and beyond? Right. So I just think, so we've just launched this, this product. We're very much a minimalist brand. Huh? We don't have many, many products. And uh, it's about, I feel as well, so I was talking to you about our Good Skin Trio, because simply I feel that all women of all ages, of all, all, all skin colors and all different skin types, and in fact, I will include men here, do you know that men love pink as well, actually, on huh? the misconception that they don't? I just, oh, gosh, my packaging is not going to work for guys. You will be surprised. <laughs> that, in fact, we all share the same basic needs. And for these needs, I just like to keep things simple for me. Uh, when I say, I mean, I'm a formulator at heart, a good formula does it all. But when it comes to skin concerns, then we, we have what we call our night switch. Night switch, it's a little 
joke on the fact that like the, the night switch, that you use them at, at night, but also because we have this unusual concept of skin switching. I, I feel here again with my minimalist approach that it's best to ask the skin to do one thing at a time and to do it well. So I do not propose that you use all these different boosters and serum all at the same time and not uh, because the skin is like us. It, it has only limited energy that is very important to understand with the, the skin and it's going to prior, prioritize. So if I, if I, for example, give you 10 jobs to do in the morning and I come back in the evening and check what you've done, you've run like a headless chicken, but you've not achieved anything. The skin is the same. So it is best to concentrate on one task do it well. So what we do, so we propose that you would use a night switch for a few weeks, say four weeks for retinol, for example. And then another very important thing to do is to give your skin a rest where you're only using moisturizer at night because the skin needs to rest to reset as well, and then use something else. So for menopause, as we're talking, we've just launched our night switch phytoestrogen and peptide specifically for menopausal skin, for perimenopausal skin, during menopause uh, and postmenopause. Again, how do you define <laughs> what is before, during, uh, during and after? I don't think that you need a specific all routine that suddenly, oh gosh, I have menopause. So I must bin and ditch everything that I was using that I loved so much. It's completely ridiculous. You do not need a specific cleanser. You do not need a specific moisturizer. If there is a beloved face oil and, and, and serum that you adore, absolutely. But consider that you, you can use a specific booster at night and a phytoest a phytoestrogen, sorry, I tend to pronounce it the French way, uh, and a collagen peptide that are specifically designed for to treat the very, very specific type of aging that the skin suffers during menopause, which is to become thinner. It's not so much just uh, like the deep wrinkle that starts dev develop at any, at any age, but more when your skin is, is that uh, the skin that is crepey. That, do, do you know, that is those tiny, 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 <laughs> but lots and lots and lots and lots of them, little, little wrinkle rather than the deep wrinkles. Mm -hmm. And that is because your skin produces less collagen. So the dermis becomes thinner and thinner. There's no support for the surface and you get this little bumpy, bumpy, bumpy skin that we don't like. And, and, the phytoestrogen and peptide work well for that. One of the things that comes up time and time again is the fact that, yes, people might have their beloved moisturizers, but they stop working because they're not strong enough or they're not rich enough or they just don't have the same effect as they used to. So doing the rotation or adding in a retinol for a period of time and then only a moisturizer, does that help? Yes, yes. The same with uh, our night switch phytoestrogen and peptide. You would also use it for four weeks, stop, and use something else. So the perfect routine is to use phytoestrogen for four weeks, stop for a few days, and then use retinol. Stop for a few days again and reuse phytoestrogen. That is because your skin also not only has limited energy, but also gets bored. And it is the best way that I can describe it. So the way active ingredients work on the skin is by stimulating receptors on the membrane on the skin of the skin cells. So if the, the skin cells are bombarded all the time with the same active, we, we reach what we call the plateau effect and then it, it stops doing anything. So it is, it is good to use it for a while, stop, use something else and come back to it. I know, th I know that because very often when that happens, there's a, a, a consumer, they've bought uh, one of our products or one I formulated and they say, gosh, the, 
I bought this fabulous serum. The first bottle was fabulous. So I bought it again, and I think they must have changed the formula because my second bottle didn't work so well. No, the brand are not always responsible and terrible people and have cheapened the formula. But quite simply, uh, skin has reached the plateau effect and what seems wonderful doesn't work anymore. I often say as well, if it was if it was good enough to use retinol all the time not to have wrinkle, nobody would have wrinkle. I would not have any. The proof in the pudding, in the pudding is in the pudding. I still have some. So, And it's the same. It will be exactly the same with phytoestrogen and peptide. It would be so wonderful if I could tell you, use that every night, all the time, and you absolutely not going to have creepy skin. It sadly doesn't work that way. It, it, it is not a miracle, but it will, it, it works well and it will improve your skin. There's also, we also have the consumers. When I say one pump is enough, they think, oh, maybe if I use three, you know, you're just going to spend more money and it's not going to work better. One final thing, Colette. I feel that joy in life is essential and something that we need more of particularly in midlife when you might be looking after younger children and older parents and the daily grind. What gives you pleasure and joy in your life? Uh, my grandchildren, my, my grandchildren. That's the thing because we, you, you know, we've been talking of menopause with, with menopause starts to come an age where you, it's, it's wonderful grandchildren because you, you're not responsible for their education. <laughs> and it's it's just an immense an immense pleasure to have these children around you it's an absolute joy oh that is just gorgeous is there anything that you would like to add that it was my absolute pleasure to speak to you with you this afternoon oh well you are lovely thank you so much um where can people find you Alors, they can find our product on our website at uh, lixiaskin.co.uk or they can go on the website or in stores at Liberties, uh, Harrods, uh, John Lewis, uh, and, and, and many others, uh, Sephora, etc. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk My to you. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank Bye-bye, you. Bye-bye, Hattie. You can find Colette on Instagram at Lixia Skin and her website, lixiaskin.co.uk, and all her beautiful products at Sephora, Liberty, Harrods, John Lewis, Selfridges, and many more. Just look it up on the internet. And a final note on Real Menopause Therapy, subscription is currently free and sign up is obligation free as well. Have a look around and see how it works at bit.ly forward slash rm therapy. That's bit dot ly forward slash rm therapy capital r capital m capital t thank you for listening i look forward to seeing you in the next episode